Good morning, Responsible Day Traders. Today is Monday, January 24th, 2022. I am Lindsay Duff, and this is Responsible Day Trading. So it has been a little bit of a wild ride over the last few days of trading, man. I have kept a little bit of an eye on it, but I've been in and out and in and out, so it's a little hard to take care of things. I did take one trade late last night, got around $400 or actually right after the market opened. It was just one quick in and out. Probably could have gotten a little more off of it, but it's okay. Not a big deal. I definitely won't be trading today. I have like, I feel like I'm forever at the dentist, but I have a dentist appointment this morning, blah, 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 stuff to do. Okay. I am going to be out today. I'll be out Thursday. Uh, let's see if maybe I can get something going tomorrow or Wednesday. We'll see what's going on with the market and if I've got some time to put it in. Because one of the things that's really important to me when I'm trading is making sure that my mindset is only on trading. Because if I'm on emails I need to answer or if I'm on, you know, thinking about something going on with the kids, it's always a hit or miss with that. And if I come into trading with out just trading on my mind or thinking about the things I got to do or frustrations, then it's probably not going to work out too well for me. So I've learned that about me and I take that step back. So, all right, let me get off that soapbox just a little bit and let's go ahead and look at the news this morning. Okay. So let's go ahead, go on over here to responsibledaytrading.com, go to news, go to market news and let's see, I haven't even looked at it today. So tomorrow, okay, we got FOMC this week. Tomorrow, we've got something at 9 a.m. So nothing today. Great. Tomorrow, 9 a.m. for kind of, you know, half an hour after we start. Wednesday may be a little bit of a doozy. We've got new home sales, crude oil, oil inventories. Those are in the morning. Then in the afternoon, we have FOMC. Now, FOMC can hit us a couple of different ways. Sometimes it just slows, slows, slows down before and then just pops. And then other times you don't even see a difference in what happens. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Thursday, we've got a lot of pre-market news. We can see, you know, an hour before the market opens and then half an hour after the market opens. And then it looks like Friday may be a bit of a quiet day. So let's go ahead and look at what we got going on in the market. Y'all. Wow. Okay. So last week I drew these little boxes of, Hey, if we go here and it's continuing, we're looking at this next spot. And then we were looking at the next spot. You can see by looking at my 10,946, those areas held up the market for a little bit, pulled back, came back to the next one, pulled up. And it looks like we are heading for that 4,200 area. That's a big, big drop in a couple of days, but Hey, it's all good. Now I remember as we were speaking last week, I said, I had a pretty good feeling this was going to actually push down further than here. And here's why uh, we did get rid of the divergence here. And then we created a new divergence, which pushed the market down. Um, typically we see a couple of these little pullbacks in the area and then the move back up. We can see like right back in here and right back in here, but we were at our third ping there and the MACDs just blew outside of those Bollinger Bands. Now they are starting to lighten up a little bit. And what I want to do is close this up because I want you to look and we've got some major pivotal areas uh, you know, we had this big, big, big one here down here. I don't expect to see that area in the MACDs anytime soon, or maybe even again, because that was just a, was a huge, huge push in that direction. We had a pandemic just starting off. We had all kinds of craziness going on there. And so that gave it that extreme, extreme look. So we're coming into this last base area of where the market of where the MACDs really come to. And I will expect it to bounce off of here. That doesn't mean it can't come back and roll into the area and continue down. So we may see these MACDs roll into the Bollinger Band as this pulls down and move back down again. But what we see right now is pretty much a strong move to the downside. The bars are closing towards the bottom of the of each bar and it's really, really pushing hard. So we have a pretty good chance of seeing this come all the way down towards that next area. We're really going to have to see these MACDs slow down and kind of 
bunch together like we see here, see them get inside, roll inside and move up. But until then, this is what we got here. So let's look at our next tick chart, 28657. So on the 28657, what do we got going on? Man, this looks like it's trying to push down more. Let me turn this off just here. Uh, we can see the price coming down towards the bottom. The MACDs are outside of the Bollinger Bands for right now. Now this could pull back in and push up. We do have divergence going on between the pivots at the bottom. We can see here where it's leading much, much higher as the price is pulling down. And that is a sign of a pullback. It happened here. It happened here. It pulled us back into the area. So we're going to have to really see some strong movement to the upside in order to really see this have the potential to break through these areas and come back up. Right now, guys, we are in a downtrend. We had a nice big uptrend for quite some time. In our 28,657, we've started making these new lows and we've gotten back behind these major areas here. So we are going to have to see some major work to see this come back through. Now, can this snap back and come back through? I mean, we are poised for a snapback and a snapback is when we're really, really far away from those EMAs. They act like magnets and you can see we just keep coming back to the EMAs. So we will anticipate this to come back to it right now. Maybe not. It looks like it's still trying to push a little bit lower if I look at my smaller charts. So before I look at just that smaller chart, let me look through all of my charts together and let me kind of squeeze this up just a little bit. feels like a little bit larger than usual. All right. So let's look at our three trading charts that I'm using currently. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this. So we're going to start with the 10946, which is my biggest chart. Then I'm going to look at the 1597, which is my trading chart and my 233, which is my immediate entry chart, right? So if I'm looking at the 10946, guys, we're in a downward spiral. <laughs> We do once again have major divergence between the pivots, the MACDs, and the price are disagreeing. The prices keep leading lower. The MACDs are struggling to get down there, but we can see that we do have what looks like strength to the outside to continue down. Um, would I take this trade right here right now? Ooh, it feels very, very late if you do, <laughs> right? Um, so I would probably wait for it to give a deeper retracement back into the areas of the EMAs and then determine whether or not the EMAs are have the potential to hold or to break at that point. And so what I mean by that, do they have the potential to hold and push the market down continuing, or are we going to break back up and reach that next area? So right now we look like we are trying to move this market back to the upside. We can see the divergence between these two pivots. You can see how the MACDs are disagreeing from the price in a pretty extreme way here on the 1597. So I actually, if those MACD start breaking outside the top Bollinger Band, I'm going to anticipate it to pull back towards the area right here in the EMA and next right here in the EMA if we exceed past that area. So those will be kind of my points to look for. So while we're in a downward market right now, we're starting to see the potential for this to move back to the upside. And that is you know, what we do all day here. We're going to be watching, is this have the, does this have the potential to move up? Does it have the potential to move down? What am I going to do when I see it happening? I mean, there's all kinds of longs and shorts opportunities throughout the day. You don't have to be stuck in one way throughout the day. You don't have to be stuck in, hey, I'm just looking for this market to move down because we're below the EMAs. There's always the retracement possibilities. And this one actually has a very large retracement possibility coming back, you know, 10 points from the 60 to the 70 area. But as we can see, taking those reversal trades and a strong trending market might get you a, a little slap on the boo-boo because once we got back up to that area and you have to be very precise about taking these, taking it from here, once it slows down, getting out at that point, And that's just a couple of points through there, right? And so you've got to be quick on the draw and be ready.
whenever it decides that it's going to do something else. So we were looking for that pullback at that moment, but we are still in a trending market to the downside. So we've got to look for very clear signals that say this is either going to push up or push down. And right now, the clear signal is that it's still trying to move to the downside as we see the strength in the MACDs on our bigger tick charts like we see there and like we see here as the MACDs are still picking up to the downside on the 28,657. So it's a constant, I don't want to call it game, but yeah, it's a constant game of saying, okay, what is the market telling me right now? And, you know, people say, oh, Lindsay, how do you do this? It's because I'm constantly listening to what it has to say right now. Is it telling me that I need to get out of a short or a long? Is it telling me that that strength, that momentum that I had once seen in that direction is dying out? The problem is a lot of times we try and make it do what we want it to do because we saw that initial strength and we saw that initial direction. And we say, well, that's what we saw. And then we get our mind stuck in that space saying that that's what we have to continue looking for. And that's the problem that a lot of us go through is being able to switch that mindset to, oh man, it's done going to the downside. Now I need to start looking for long trades. We keep trying to catch that move and trying to push it in that direction because that's the way it was going and we figure it should still. But that doesn't mean because it was once going that way that it always will. Just think about relationships, okay? Just because uh, things were great and honky-dory you know, two years ago doesn't mean they are now because it takes work and paying attention. <laughs> So it's the same kind of work for relationships that it is for trading the market. So, all right, guys, there's my relationship advice, even though I am definitely not an expert in that arena. That is going to be it. I have a very, very, very busy day today, which starts as soon as I'm done making this video. So I hope everybody has a wonderful week. Uh, I'm going to try and get in at least one trading video this week. And uh, as always, guys, you know that I look forward to catching you on the profitable side.